गुड आफ्टरनून आई एम डॉक्टर नेहा भंडारी आई एम कंसल्टेंट पीडियाट्रिक नेफ्रोलॉजिस्ट एट श्री बालाजी एक्शन मेडिकल इंस्टीट्यूट टुडे वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम इन चिल्ड्रन सो यूजली वी सी इन आर ओ पी डीज चिल्ड्रन कमिंग विद स्वेलिंग ओवर फेस इनिशियली स्टार्टेड ऑफ विथ लाइक पेरियोबाइटल स्वेलिंग दैट इज़ अराउंड द आईज ग्रेजुअली प्रोग्रेस टू इन्वॉल्व एबडोम एंड लेग्स and the mother or the father will give you a history of decreased urine output also sometimes these conditions may be associated with fever or other signs and symptoms of infection like cough and cold on investigation we may find some protein in the urine there may be associated hematuria or hypertension which may be there so these conditions which may be associated with infection may be a transient process they may just present uh, as with infection and the swelling and the protein may resolve as and when the infection resolves this entity or this condition is known as acute glomerulonephritis or post infectious glomerulonephritis in which the child you may find having swelling for some time or one week or 10 days like that the next condition which has a similar presentation in which the child would initially present with swelling which would typically give you a history the parents will give you a history that the child started having swelling in the morning when he gets up around the eyes they notice and gradually by evening the swelling goes off there may be associated decreased urine output if you really poke on the history then they would come up so these children are suffering from nephrotic syndrome so today in this second facebook live i would be talking about nephrotic syndrome in children and hope you all would connect with me during this talk so starting off about nephrotic syndrome so nephrotic syndrome the most common age group in which it occurs is around 2 to 8 years of age we usually find it uncommon less than 1 year of age or more than 9 year of age this age group is the common age group so their treatment goes well they respond to the medicines that we treat so definition of nephrotic syndrome or characteristics of nephrotic syndrome are the children present with proteinuria which is a very significant protein urea so if we investigate the protein urea comes to more than 50 mg per meter square per hour there is swelling which is a clinical symptom which is the most common presentation the swelling as i've discussed before then there is hypoalbuminemia on investigation so albumin level is less than 2.5 g per deciliter then there is also hypercholesterolemia so if you see the cholesterol level is more than 250 general range is around 200 mg per deciliter so these are the four characteristics of nephrotic syndrome three are on investigations and one is clinically symptom rarely patient the child may have hypertension that is high blood pressure he may present with hematuria that is blood in the urine which may be macroscopic or macro microscopic there can be some secondary features like the child may be really pale the child may present with kidney failure they which comes as high urea and high blood creatinine they may be associated joint pains they may be skin rash so uh, these are all the additional symptoms in a case of nephrotic syndrome which sometimes we really need to look on for now when i talk about nephrotic syndrome it's very important that we take a family history though in most of the nephrotics you would never find any family history positive they would just come up with something like there's no family history of nephrotic syndrome the first child who has actually come up with a nephrotic syndrome but you have to ask in the family if there's a family history of kidney failure or if there is a family history of uh, hearing defects because these children me are present as a very severe form of nephrotic syndrome then there may be sometimes preceding history if you so i am emphasizing on the importance of history in taking by the doctors by the practitioners and by uh, history giving by the parents there may be a history of drug intake the drugs which may be ayurvedic drugs which can contain heavy metals which may be some chemotherapeutic drugs then there may be a history of uh, Uh, a preceding history of any herbal medicine so this history is very important because the nephrotic may may have been started because of all this i've already told you the common age group that's between 2 to 8 years it is more predisposed in male children now 
coming on to what is causing nephrotic syndrome so the pathogenesis of nephrotic syndrome is mainly related to immune changes in our body for primary nephrotic syndrome so we classify nephrotic syndrome as primary and secondary nephrotic syndrome so primary nephrotic syndrome which is common in like 95 percent of the children and you would really find that there is no cause for them it's just immune modulation immune changes in the body which really results in the release of a lot of leukotrienes, prostaglandins, which results in nephrotic syndrome. So primary nephrotic syndrome, there is no underlying cause for it. 95% of the children having nephrotic are primary. Secondary may be related to other causes like drug intake. There can be autoimmune causes like SLE, HSP. Then they can be related to infections, severe infections like uh, malaria, tuberculosis. All this can result in nephrotic, then hepatitis B. So we really need to rule out all these secondary causes of nephrotic syndrome because they are really difficult to treat. Now coming on to the history and clinical examination, history wise I have already discussed what are the possible causes so we have to take a history according to that. Clinical examination we have to really see where all the edema is there. Sometimes we will find even genital areas are edematous. Child may come with severe uh, edema which may have gone to the lungs also and they may present as pulmonary edema. So, and then clinical examination is especially important in younger children because in younger children you would really find uh, especially less than one year of age they may have genetic association there may be a couple of children in the family who are having nephrotic or uh, they may present with secondary causes of nephrotic uh, syndrome in those cases we really need to do genetic analysis and find out the cause and these less than one year are always very difficult to treat and they present as steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome so we'll be discussing a, a little while later now coming on to the investigations so investigations history i would like to go back one more thing that if any dysmorphic features like the child looks abnormal or the child is not mentally well developed or the genitalia are ambiguous genitalia especially in younger children we really need to examine the child well. We need to take the blood pressure, the vitals of the children. Coming on to now investigations. So when I talk about investigations, they are mainly blood and urine investigations. So when I talk about urine investigations, we really need to rule out infection. So we need to see pus cells, leukocyte esterase, nitrite. Then we need to look for a protein in the urine and RBCs in the urine. So RBCs like they can be microscopic hematuria which may be associated or they can be macroscopic hematuria like clinically you can see the child is having red urine. Coming on to the blood investigation then third one which I spoke was in the urine was protein. So we really need, can do a 24 hours urine protein which will give you an actual idea of how much protein the child is passing in 24 hours or we can just initially start off with a urine dipstick which can give you a fair idea of the amount of proteinuria so significant in case of nephrotic is normally if it's around uh, 200 to 300 so it's plus 3 or plus 4 on the dipstick is very significant now coming on to the next once you have seen the urine now blood investigation so blood investigation we start off with any infection we really need to rule out because if we have to label a child as a nephrotic we really need to rule out acute glomerulonephritis or any acute infection which can result in proteinuria then there are some investigations which are very specific like complementary ANA these are all invest HPSAG to rule out any secondary cause of nephrotic syndrome then in other blood investigations the significant are albumin that is the serum albumin if it is less than 2.5 gram per deciliter it's significant if cholesterol is high that is more than 200 gram per deciliter then it's important now coming on to the next thing that uh, whenever we want to uh, treat a nephrotic it is very important to rule out an infection that is why I am emphasizing this thing so we really need to rule out tuberculosis in such children especially in Indian, Indian subcontinent where we find prevalent tuberculosis infection so we suggest to do a Montux and a chest x-ray before we start the child on treatment so coming on to <coughs> so coming on to genetic testing genetic testing is only needed in less than one year of age or in cases of steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome or in some specific cases where there is family history there are some abnormal features that we are seeing so now coming on to the next is the treatment so there are two forms of treatment that is most important one is symptomatic and one is for the disease specific Coming on to symptomatic treatment, it is very important that we need to decrease the edema. 
that is a swelling because the child has primarily come to you for this problem only. So once I talk about edema, then we really need to start the child on diuretics. So diuretics are uh, main drugs which can control edema, which would increase urine output in the child. Supposing if, we, if it's required, then we do it. Edema management, which is very important part because that will give relief to a child. Mm -hmm. Then other things are like dietary restriction. So whenever a child with nephrotic syndrome comes to us, we, re we always suggest the child to have less amount of fluid. Once they have a lot of fluid, then the edema or the swelling starts increasing more. So fluid restriction is very important, especially till the time you start them on specific treatment. So once you restrict a fluid, which may vary depending on the age and the size of the child to 300 to 600 ml per day, you really need to give low salt because if you give very high salt in the diet, then the swelling will increase further. So once we are done with the symptomatic treatment, coming on to the specific treatment. So specific treatment, most important is the first drug that we use in nephrotic syndrome is steroids. So steroids, uh, I know a lot of people get scared hearing steroids, but this is the first line of treatment in a nephrotic syndrome when the child is coming with a persistent swelling. So steroids, we generally start after ruling out all infections because in infections, if you give steroids, your infection will flare up. So once you start steroids, started at a dose of 2 mg per kg per day, which is given for a period of about 6 weeks, and then we shift to onto alternate day steroid, which is again given to period of 6 weeks. During this period, the child, we expect the child to be in remission. Usually 90% of the children you will find they would just go into remission, that is the protein stops coming out in the urine by the first 2 weeks when we start steroids. That's in the 90%. Some 10% may still go up to four weeks and they may respond after that. That is the protein stops coming out. But still, even after four weeks, if the child doesn't stop, the protein doesn't stop coming out, in those cases, there's steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome. So when I talk about this, there are three varieties of children that response of nephrotic we'll find when we start on steroids. One, I've already spoken steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome where there is no response. Another is steroid. 90% of the children that we find they are uh, steroid uh, responsive, there can be two varieties. One is a frequent relapser and another is infrequent relapser. So if a child is having frequent infections, like frequently is having the swelling and the edema, which is more than two episodes in six months time and more than three episodes in one year time, then these are frequent relapses of nephrotic syndrome. They may require additional drug except prednisolone for their treatment. When I talk about uh, infrequent relapses, so they are less than two episodes in six months or less than three episodes in one year, they would occasionally or on and off with infection if they're relapsing at times, but which is very infrequent, they would just require prednisolone and that too as a dose for a very small period of time. Then the next would be steroid dependent. So some children are there uh, in those 10% in which I've spoken about uh, steroid resistant, in some cases, they would be initially presenting as steroid dependent that you cannot take off the steroids. Once you stop the steroids, the child will start uh, having proteinuria again. So now coming on to uh, the side effects of steroids, which is very important. So as and when, because since we are using this prednisolone or visolone or steroids for a longer period of time, so a lot of side effects may be there. One of the very common side effects that we see is a Cushing white features where the child is having chubby cheeks. You really find the child is having an exorbitant appetite. He's eating, eating, eating. So when, when a child after six weeks walks into the OPD is almost gained like two, three kgs. You can see the significant difference on the face. In the skin, long-term use can cause trya. There can be associated irritability. The child may get angry very soon mood disturbances may be there. So long-term steroid usage can actually cause hypertension in a child, that is high blood pressure. They can have diabetes. They can have cataract or glaucoma also. So these are all the side effects of steroids. Before starting, we really need to talk to parents. Excessive hair growth is also one of the very important side effects because cosmetic reasons. So sometimes the parents may discontinue steroids in between, but I would like to re-emphasize it's very important to continue the medicine for the time that 
a specialist doctor prescribes you. If you discontinue in between or you give on and off medicines, you will make your child steroid responsive to steroid resistant. So it's very important to have compliance to therapy. You may encounter side effects which are very common with the children and acidity or gas problems which are also common. So for that we always give antacids along with steroids. So uh, once the child is compliant to therapy, we would really see in two weeks time the uh, swelling will come down and the child is better. During this time, we would expect the parents to check everyday protein. It is not easy to go to a lab to get it checked, so they can actually check it at home, which they can use Uri sticks, which we always prescribe to all the parents to use it. So they can actually every day when the child gets up in the morning, once a day they have to check and they can actually come to know whether there is any protein or there is no protein at all. So now in 60 to 70% of the children who present as nephrotic syndromes, so in those children you would find that they would uh, respond to steroids very well, they may have just one episode, they may not have repeat episodes. Now the next 40% of the children who are steroid responsive that I have already spoken, they may have frequent relapses. The rest of them may not have frequent relapse. So once a child has relapsed, at that point of time we would not go back to the 6 plus 6 regime. That is we would just wait till the time the child goes in remission. That is the protein stops coming out and we will shift the child to alternate day therapy. And we would gradually taper off in some weeks time. Sometimes a child may be steroid dependent but if he is only on low dose of steroids then we may need to continue it for like 6 to 9 months low dose steroids. But then we have to keep a watch on the side effects of steroids. So now, uh, supposing if there is only steroid, uh, there is there is only steroid treatment and the child is still not responding. In those cases, we have other drugs also, which are like mycophenolate, levamisole is there. Uh, there is cyclophosphamide. These drugs can be given if the steroids is not completely curing the child or the child is having recurrent relapses. If there is steroid resistant, in those cases, we would suggest to go for a kidney biopsy. Kidney biopsy is not a very difficult procedure though it needs a lot of precision and a uh, lot of expertise. It just needs one day of admission in uh, any hospital and then ultrasounded guided kidney biopsies can be easily done where we take a very small sample of kidney and which is sent for analysis. So the indications for kidney biopsy in a child with nephrotic if, if its age of onset is less than one year or more than nine years which the common age group is two to eight years so if anyone more than nine years or less than one year we expect to do a kidney biopsy the child is steroid resistant or steroid dependent and not getting controlled with the other medicines that we have suggested if there is associated hypertension which is persisting if there is hematuria that is there is blood in the urine which can be macroscopic that is you can see or microscopic hematuria and uh, if there is uh, other uh, associated features like any kidney failure in the family or hearing defects then we need to do. So now coming on to once we have treated the nephrotic then once we have done a biopsy there are other drugs like CNIs, calcineurin inhibitors which have a very good control in nephrotic they can be used. Coming on to complications of nephrotic, so nephrotic syndrome a children can present with various complications like cellulitis, they may have peritonitis, sometimes they have thrombosis also which is one of the rare complications but we need to keep a watch for all these complications. Two keywords that I would like to use is one is immunization should not be done when a child is on steroids. Please avoid giving any immunization at least for four to six weeks till the time we discontinue steroids. After that you can immunize the child. And the last thing that a lot of patients keep asking me whether they would require a transplant in nephrotic syndrome. So in, if it's steroid dependent or it's steroid responsive, you would not require a transplant. Generally it will go off after 9 to 10 years of age. If it's steroid resistant and it's still persisting in adulthood, then probably and it's not responding to the, cup, the number of medicines that we have, then you may require but initially it's only medicines, no transplant is needed, kidney is usually saved in nephrotic syndrome. Only thing it's risky less than one year if it's genetically and it presents with so much proteinuria which is not getting controlled then we may need to go for bilateral nephrectomy and the child may require dialysis and transplant further. I hope you like it. Please leave your comments and if any problem you can always consult me back at Action Balaji, Shri Balaji Action Medical Institute where I am on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays 10 to 12. Thank you.